Hello Ethical Hackers and welcome to this episode in which we're going to see how we can use the Upload Scanner Burp extension to automate most of the file upload security testing. So here I am uh, in the OWASP JuiceSoft web application and let me just go ahead and exploit a SQL injection to log in. Alright, if I go to the profile page, I can see that there is a user profile picture that I can change. When I upload the picture, it gets updated. Alright, now I'm going to capture that request and see what's going on behind the scenes. And here we have a POST request which contains our PNG file. Now, in most file upload features, you normally send this request to the repeater and then you start poking around. So, for example, I might just change the magic number of the PNG file and send it and I get back an error saying that the MIME is undefined, which means that the backend is somehow using the header of the file to decide which file is that. Other things that you can do is maybe change the MIME type. So let's say we want to change it to HTML page. We get redirected, which means that our image has been updated and if we refresh the page we still get the same image though and if we view the image there is a path to a PNG file. Other tests that we can do involve maybe changing the file name or injecting commands inside the file name etc. So everything here can be changed but it's kind of tedious to try to fuzz each and every input so that's why I like to use Upload Scanner. So if you go to the extender, Burp App Store, you can see that we have Upload Scanner here. You see that I've already installed it. Notice that it's a pro extension, so it won't work for Burp Community Edition. But it's as easy as just hitting this button to install it. All right. Now let's go to the extensions list and um, just make sure that we have the extension activated. You'll see that there is a new tab appearing here, Upload Scanner. So let's go ahead and send this request to the Upload Scanner. Alright, a new tab appears here with an index of 1 and this is our request. So generally you have this configuration that you can do. So first of all you have a bunch of modules which upload scanner extension uses. You have image tragic, uh, you have ghost script, PHP, GSP, ASP, you can test for Perl, Python scripts, etc. So we have a bunch of modules here that we can use. We already know that we are not using ASP in the, or JSP or PHP, so we can deactivate those. But I'm interested in uh, image magic and ghost script uploads. Maybe the backend performs some conversions using a vulnerable library. After choosing the modules, I can go ahead and choose the file extensions I want to use uh, or the file format. So in this case the application accepts all the image extensions but I want to also test for videos, for flash, for CSV, zip, XML, etc. And because I'm testing on the live OWASP juice shop website I'm going to be gentle and just use a throttling of two seconds between each request. I'm going to use a time delay uh, to detect if the application is vulnerable and the, the time would be 6 seconds. 
I also want to log everything in the done uploads tab so that I can show you what's going on behind the scenes so I'm going to check this one and you can see here that we can replace file name in requests and we can replace content type and file size I can even detect vulnerabilities based on callbacks rather than sleeps so it's really exhaustive in testing file upload vulnerabilities besides it's also capable of fetching the file once it's uploaded and right here in this area you can see that it supports also dynamic uh, files so if you upload a file and it returns a dynamic value you can still fetch this using those inputs but since our application uses just a static URL let's copy the image location and paste it in the second option here which says alternatively a static URL can be used so in this case upload scanner would try to also fetch the file it uploads so that it can see if there is some kind of reflection for example in the case where it uploads a HTML MIME type it might return the HTML page in the response instead of the image file so in this case that would trigger a cross-site scripting and so once we define that endpoint to fetch we can see that there is a new button here which got activated which says send redownloader request so once you hit this you get a response back and the response contains well an empty image which is kind of weird but let's verify that we have indeed the right path which is this one and let's verify the upload um, the upload request so right now I get a mime of undefined although I have png here so let me just go back to the repeater send this again and verify that the request is correct and then send this back to the repeater to the upload scanner a new tab appears let's copy the url of the image to be fetched and paste it accordingly and now let's verify and right away we see that we have fetched the png image so with that configured Let's start the scan with the redownloader. And if we go to the done uploads, we can see the requests that have been performed. So, for example, you can see here that the extension is sending a file that would potentially trigger an image tragic vulnerability if the application is vulnerable. We can see here, for example, that it's trying to upload an XML file. And in response, we get this error saying that the application doesn't support XML, which validates our hypothesis about the application verifying the, the magic number of the file, which is nothing but the first characters of the file. Usually, each file has its signature or its magic number, which indicates which format is this. For example, PNG magic number starts with hex characters 89, 50, 40, e, and 47. JPEG, on the other hand, is saw with FFD8, FFDB, and so on and so forth. So we have a bunch of requests. So in this request, for example, you can see that the extension tries to fetch the image. In this example, the file name contains a double extension to verify if we can bypass the extension validation. We saw that in this application it's not the case. The verification is done on the file magic number instead. But you get an idea of the type of tests that are usually done in a manual way, carried out automatically by this awesome extension. And when you go to the dashboard tab, you can see here a list of potential issues that are reported by the extension. So here, for example, it says that the server might use a vulnerable version of image magic and it tried to send this request and then got a response with our famous mime of undefined message and when we try to get it we get the normal image that has already been uploaded before this request so i would say that this is a false positive
a tool ju is just a tool and it's up to you to verify if it's a real vulnerability or just a false positive. But you get the idea that instead of fuzzing every user input in the upload feature, you can leverage this extension to automate the process and verify the vulnerabilities or the potential issues that might be real vulnerabilities. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Until the next one, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.